Hello everyone and welcome to After Hours Gaming League Week 1 of the 2015 season. I am your caster for the match, Crick Chronic War Catalyst. And as you can see here, we're all loaded in with the actual picks and bands in the order they proceeded normally. So we have a treat to talk about the actual pick man phase this time. I am excited, but let me first introduce our teams. On the blue side, we have... LinkedIn, uh, which is essentially a social media company, but for your job, which is actually kind of cool. And on the red side, we have Crunchyroll, uh, which is, you know, if you're if you're an anime nerd like myself, uh, it's probably the best site ever because it uh, creates some legitimacy to actually streaming anime online without having to worry about the whole piracy issue. Uh, so. Two really actually forward-thinking, uh, tech-focused, moving into the future kind of uh, companies. And they are both playing uh, for the charity Child's Play, which is uh, a favorite, uh, as you can tell by how so many of the teams we cast have Child's Play as their selected charity. It's a very uh, favorite charity among gamers because we all uh, have had our lives improve significantly through the pleasures of gaming. And Child's Play goes into... Uh, hospitals and domestic violence shelters and uh, brings children uh, in those situations the gift of gaming to try and help them uh, reconnect with their childhood and actually uh, move beyond whatever traumatic things have happened to them. So great charity. Um, I'm glad to see both teams playing for it. Um, so let's talk right now about the pick and ban phase. Uh, the ban's pretty standard on the blue side. We saw NAR, Thrush, and J4 all pretty strong right now. Similarly, on the red side, uh, LeBlanc, Vayne, and Rek'Sai, all fairly strong right now, pretty solid all-around threats. Um, so, fairly standard comfort bands for both sides here. Uh, we did see uh, the Cho'Gath coming out pretty soon after the Aurelia for the blue side. So that did give away uh, that Cho'Gath is going to be uh, the jungle. There is the possibility of it uh, being a flex pick for the mid, uh, but... Unless if you saw a really uh, strong AP threat coming out of the uh, jungle, it's probably not the most likely case, even with a Corky uh, bringing in that mixed damage from the Trinity Force. Um, to answer, we saw a uh, pretty uh, non-standard lock-ins as well here uh, with the Sejuani Blitzcrank, uh, two of uh, one of the, uh, the funner champions uh, to watch in the game. Uh, more fun, I should say, but whatever. <laughs> um... So those uh, Sejuani uh, is going to look to uh, charge into team fights as much as possible, uh, swinging that above her head <laughs> as she likes to do. Um, so we're gonna, as we boot up the client here, um, she's gonna look to be the main source of engage for the red side, um, aside from obviously Blitz landing one of those poles and creating a team fight, whether or not <laughs> Blue Side wanted one. Um, but to follow that up, we do have uh, the very strong damage for anyone who is caught. They have to suffer the wrath of Lucian and Annie. Uh, in the game earlier today, we casted, uh, we saw an Annie go insane with burst potential. Um, so likely to have somebody thrown up here, or blown up here, uh, if that Annie starts to get out of hand as well. And Blitz uh, actually pulls someone within her range. God help them. <laughs> um, so... Uh, certainly be on the lookout, as always, for the Blitz Pulls, uh, as I rearrange the champions here to make them all nice and pretty. Um, uh, also, Udyr in the top lane, um, more common in the jungle, but it's nice to actually see an Udyr brought out in the lane. Um, Udyr, of course, uh, has different stances as his abilities, so... Uh, we're going to uh, be able to see a lot of uh, different uh, stance potentials here to see Udyr toggling between those uh, to try and get the most out of his auto attacks, weaving in as much uh, damage as possible there, and getting the stuns out uh, for some key CC, which is um, pretty much the only CC he does offer, but that is a very strong stun um, that can create a lot of plays uh, if you get uh, the Sejuani in there as well in a gank. Uh, it's a very solid stun to set up a solid gank as well. And it looks like we're going to have Red Side uh, going in for a possible invade right now. There was a ward thrown down here by the blue side. 
Um, so they will spot this if they do come out of that bush, and they are in the tri bush, so they're not going to be able to slip into the spot side here at all. Um, kind of actually risky play piling into the bot bush like this, given that blitzes will often stand here in this uh, uh, dragon pit and just try and blind pull around there. But they did spot the four man invade. Coming out, Blitz going to try and see if he can land a pull onto somebody. He did throw down the trinket, but is not looking to pull that Cho'Gath. Um, <laughs> Quirky doing a little dance to tease him here. And it looks like they're actually not going to get anything out of that. And they will be late to start here. And they're going to actually start the blue buff. Um, since they're going to be a little late, try and get Sejuani a little bit ahead here with that blue buff start. That is a rough start, though. Uh, so we will see if Sejuani is able to complete that uh, with a solid clear and move on uh, without the poison uh, from the Gromp start. That is more typical uh, on the bottom side here. Uh, we do also have Cho'Gath going to red first. Um, so Cho'Gath is much more farm oriented uh, jungler, similar to Sejuani in that respect. Uh, so we should see uh, both junglers being much more on the farm side of things. Uh, Cho'Gath perhaps a little bit more efficiently given that he is hitting his red first. Uh, but we'll see if any gank opportunities do open up in these lanes right now. Uh, we see bot side pushing a little bit early. Aurelia doing her flashy blade surging around. Um, Uh, it looks like, oh, we didn't even talk about the featured matchup yet. We do have uh, the featured matchup shown right there for a moment in the mid lane. Uh, Viger versus Annie. I know Viger isn't somebody that you see all too common, uh, but just to uh, be clear, his ultimate does uh, do additional damage based on the ability power of an opponent. So uh, once they saw the Viger... Um, Perhaps that, uh, as the final lock-in for the blue side, that might have forced uh, an Udyr lock-in top out of the pocket pick, uh, rather than a uh, possible Lissandra or a more standard uh, AP or mixed damage top laner um, that they might have been planning before that. So uh, Viger could have uh, opened up some opportunities just from uh, the threat of his ultimate, but it looks like he's actually getting... Uh, bursted down in some trades with Annie right now, so he's going to have to start burning through that elixir. He does have a weak early game, but Corky getting caught out by that blitz, that is the potential, but luckily Leona is probably one of the strongest answers to getting pulled by a blitz because she can jump right in and be on top of you, but popping the heal just to survive. Leona with the stun actually going to turn around that barrier, not going to block any damage, it doesn't seem. But Corky is extremely low right now. And with the flash trying to get out of Leona, not actually going to uh, be able to dodge the Leona going in on him still. Uh, so hopefully from the Relic Shield procs, uh, Leona will be able to heal up that Corky. Leona flashing in, going aggressive on, but there's also <laughs> action everywhere right now. Cho can land that Q and he does. First blood going to Cho'Gath. Very good for Cho'Gath here, getting him ahead in this jungle. Uh, Cho'Gath is definitely somebody who needs to uh, farm up his ultimate uh, to get those stacks on it to make him even more tanky. So getting the first kill uh, will help him get uh, those levels a little bit quicker, uh, do a little bit damage, clearing that jungler or clearly clearing that jungle, excuse me, a little bit faster. Uh, so he'll be able to reach six sooner and start stacking his ultimate a little bit quicker. Uh, which will make him tankier for these early team fights around the Dragon Pit. So that was actually a pretty good uh, kill going onto the jungle uh, for the blue side here with that kill on Annie. Both mid laners did have to go back and get a double Dorn's Blade, though it uh, looks like Viger was a little bit more lucky, able to pick up his boots as well. Um, so he is looking to dodge some more of that... Uh, um, Annie W, the AoE uh, damage spell that she has, and possibly uh, just survive any uh, attention that might come towards the mid, mid lane now, given that slight advantage she has. Uh, and even uh, might zone Annie a little bit better um, with the threat of his stun whenever it's not on cooldown. We do see, uh, still lasting here, has been this uh, Red Ward. Uh, so we they will have an idea if Cho'Gath does decide to come around to 
try and create another gank mid here. But in the meantime, it looks like there is going to be a gank talk. That's that Sejuani engage. Rayleigh did hit six though, so she's able to ult to get a good amount of uh, life steal through that through that gank. Excuse me. I know you're actually taking quite low uh, by that. Is going to be forced to go back right now. You will be able to recall back before uh, that wave gets or teleport back before that wave reaches his turret, though, if he so, should so choose. Forky, oh, getting a little greedy trying to hold the minions out of the turret aggro range. Gonna actually get pulled in by Blitz. A good counter engage uh, by Leona to get Lucian back off of uh, the issue there. But Corky already took uh, enough damage to where he's going to have to play very cautiously now. Because even those piercing lights, uh, if uh, Lucian keeps hitting those through minions to Corky, that damage is gonna pile up very quickly and it's gonna. Uh, spiral out of control a little bit in that bot lane. It does look like they are pinging out uh, the blue ward that they have in bottom lane, but in the meantime we have Cho'Gath coming in absolutely blowing up uh, Annie with that ultimate is Viger, and Cho'Gath getting the uh, second kill onto that Annie with just a basic auto attack there. That is a preview of the damage potential uh, that this Viger could put out against this Annie, possibly neutralizing her uh, in the entire game if he can get to her uh, and unload his ultimate onto her uh, in the late games and in this early team fight even. Annie actually going to pick up a Megatron cloak to try and uh, get some more survivability in that mid lane and uh, not maximize the value of that ultimate. Some good trades here in the bottom lane. Leona uh, engaging where she can. Cho'Gath going to flash Q to try and force Lucian into a position he did not want to be, but he instead saved his dash. Cho'Gath not burning his silence uh, quickly enough to keep uh, Lucian in range of the dash, but the lockup from Leona. Cho'Gath actually did not land the Q. Oh, the heal from Corky going to keep Leona just barely alive. Leona with under 100 hit points there from that last turret shot. Barely making it out with her life there. Very good play by Corky to use the heal right there. And it looks like there's actually an engagement going down in the bottom lane as well. Sejuani forced a flash there. Uh, that's a critical summoner spell there off of Sejuani. That might come into play here uh, in an early dragon here before that uh, summoner spell comes off of, of cooldown. But... Aurelia gonna blade surge and almost get the kill with that slow on to uh, Udyr right there. Udyr summoner is uh, summoner teleport is down right now, but Annie gonna flash engage, not going to land it, but is still going to have enough damage with the Tibbers, uh, thanks to the Sejuani ultimate locking down Viger, will give Annie the kill. And Annie will be able to be a little bit more contentious in this lane now. She does spot the Cho'Gath though, so she's going to have to be careful here. Cho'Gath does have quite a bit of damage. His ultimate is not up. Uh, otherwise, Annie would have to be very leery of taking this fight. But Cho'Gath actually might be biting over a bit more than he can chew. No, he just, he just gets the ultimate just in time off of cooldown to get the kill on Annie. And he is going to make it away with that teleport coming in from the Viger. And so much action right now. Quirky gonna be forced away with the Coling just barely. Uh, no longer in range to fire off an ultimate to try and kill Blitz there. Very close to another kill bottom lane. This is quite a lot of kills early on. Very action packed finding back and forth. But it does look like Blue Side uh, is the one that's coming out a bit ahead in these trades. Just getting that little extra bit of damage they need uh, to not. Uh, Miss the kills that Red Side has uh, had a problem with. Udyr going up, trying to harass uh, Aurelia as she farms as much as possible. Uh, with that safe line of minions there, she dare not fight back or she'll draw the whole aggro. Leona going a little deep, Blitz pulling her up, she was in range! Lucian gonna flash! <laughs> Didn't quite get the shot off, so close there! This is exactly what I'm talking about. There have been multiple times now where Red Side has come so close to getting a kill 
but just barely making it away is someone on the blue team, Leona. A final take a, or a final shot from uh, Lucian on that would have been a, a for sure kill and Shogath just gonna solo the dragon at this point. Um, very good play there with the uh, smite. Not even going to need to hue because of the lot or this uh, CC provided by Viger there. Annie not gonna finish Cho'Gath, but he will go down to the burn. Yes, he will go down to the burn from Sejuani's red buff, and the action continues in top lane. So, unfortunately, if Cho'Gath hadn't uh, positioned that Q, uh, assuming that uh, the Viger uh, wall was not up. Uh, Annie would have definitely fallen there, but he did not, uh, and Annie was locked out of walking into his uh, skill shot, unfortunately. So Annie is going to survive there, and now actually uh, be slightly ahead, uh, aside from the farm in mid lane. Uh, but that farm is quite a difference, up by 33 CS at the moment. So that's certainly worth uh, quite a bit, and it's going to be a substantive lead here for Viger. Uh, especially with uh, both summoners down for both mid laners here. We're going to have to wait and see how this develops uh, in the mid lane. Uh, probably going to continue to be a, a gank focus uh, mid lane as both of these champions uh, are going to, uh, with the builds they're going with, be uh, squishy uh, or uh, very high priority targets uh, going into the future here. Leona going to go in on Blitz as he tries to clear a ward. Good ward clear denial, but Leona actually going to just tank up the entire Colleen and keep Blitz locked down with her ultimate, and that's an easy kill onto the Corky there. Lucian trying to uh, get some more harass in with the piercing light on both of them is actually forced to dash away afterwards. Viger getting some good harass uh, onto the Annie still, and Cho'Gath actually going to steal the Gromp. So the counter jungling actually begins. Not something uh, very typical to see from a Cho'Gath, but a uh, very good play there to start denying the CS to put the jungler even further behind, uh, given the safety of bottom lane. But Aureli going in, going to ult Udyr to get him down fairly low here. Udyr's probably going to have to... Uh, back here after that wave. And it looks like they might have gone a little bit too deep here with Cho'Gath going to be caught out. No, the Flash is going to take him far enough. And the Sejuani ultimate thinking Cho'Gath had followed with Leona is going to miss, but will the Blitz pull be enough? No, zoned away by the Viger wall. Very good play with the wall placement there uh, from Viger, possibly saving Cho'Gath's life. Cho'Gath right now also having... Uh, only one stack, I believe? No, that's four stacks. Oh, I can't even see the little number on that. But four stacks already, so he would have lost two stacks there uh, and put himself fairly far behind. Oh, poor Udyr can't even go up to last hit right now against this Aurelia. Those trades, even with his shield up beforehand, uh, are not uh, trading effectively with the Aurelia. She is over 50, almost now 50 CS ahead. Uh, so those trades are uh, going to always be going in her favor uh, with the tri or with the sheen uh, already done for the empowered autos and the ultimate not going to be quite enough damage but will again force Udyr out of lane to continue to extend that CS discrepancy and top lane despite having no uh, kills and deaths in it is actually spiraling quite out of control in favor of the blue side. Fire's gonna lock down Annie, get some more harass in the mid lane here. And Uyur is teleporting back top with the help of Sejuani, so we might actually see some blood here in the top lane now. Aurelia will be taking the turret, but it looks like she will spend her life for it. She flashes afterwards, but it is not enough. Viger gonna get some more harass down onto Annie, and there's the combo. Locking Annie down, whittling her away with a Q, lulls her into a false sense of security over time to thinking it's just going to be a Q, and he calls down the W and ultimate to get 
The true Viger bursts there, and Annie is just simply eliminated without anything to say about it. Uh, not able to use a summoner spell or try and uh, respond with a stun at all. Udyr are trying to rush down here into the mid lane, but Viger is going to wisely back away before Udyr can, uh, can arrive. Cho'Gath continuing to lurk around uh, as the jungle comes up. They are going to see Sejuani coming. They're going to ping that out. Keep an eye for him. Look to catch him out here by the dragon pit. But Sejuani, being the tank that she is, is just going to walk away at this point. And we got another fight here. Aurelia in the top lane. But Sejuani caught out is the focus. Going to be forced away here. And if Sejuani is not able to be around that dragon, the smite won't be there. But forced away, actually, instead is the blue side. Udyr going down in this confusion in the meantime. But with that, Leona is gone, and that is the primary source of Engage right now, aside from a Viger, who is going to flash to ult the Annie again. Annie not able to do a thing about it at this point. Choga locked down. No, outside of turret range, but Aurelia coming in with the teleport. Going to be part of this cleanup crew here, and that will be an ace for the blue side. LinkedIn has to be happy about that. That is some strong play. And that's going to be the dragon here. Even without a smite, this is going to be a fairly e <laughs> uncontestable dragon with no wards for uh, Udyr to even contest if he did have the teleport. So that will be uh, the second dragon for blue side. And with that, we have uh, quite a bit of... Uh, with the pushing power... Now going over to Blue's side, um, the discrepancy in turrets is going to start expanding from just one, I believe, to quite a bit more. I'm actually uh, a little curious about this back from Corky. It seems like they probably could have had this turret down here in bot lane. Um, but unfortunately, Corky did decide to back, um, possibly just as a way to deny some more CS from the bot lane to try and extend that lead. Again, looking at the CS discrepancies, we have 40 minions in top lane and... 40 minions as well in the bottom lane. Mid lane, let me do quick math. Oh, that's a little bit over 40 minions in the mid lane as well. So right now, as far as CS goes, uh, there's not a very strong contest right now. The blue did make it over to Viger. Um, just Sejuani so just trying to clear out that pink ward as best as she can, but not actually able to get it. Leona perhaps bluffing a little bit, making them think Corky was there. Going a little bit further than she should have, but then going to make it away as Corky Valkyrie's in and knocks down the Lucian as his culling does not aim towards Corky. And Corky tanking up a few turret shots here, but gonna be able to just walk away unharmed overall there. Uh, and take the kill on to Lucian. And this game looks to be spiraling out of control. An overall 6.5k lead right now for the blue side. And this should be the turret going down, even if Sejuani does come. Looks like she's just going to take Gromp and probably try to get that mid lane. Will the Ignite be enough onto Annie? No, it will not. Going to survive under 100 HP. Wow, so that's... <laughs> I mean, that, that would have been a very uh, horrible turn of events if Annie had actually died there as well. Um, Annie looks to be uh, the primary source of damage as it uh, seems to be evolving here uh, for the red side. Um, despite having those uh, deaths, she does have a Megatron to try and give her a little bit more survivability against that Viger. But the flash, was that a flash I saw? I believe that was a flash. It probably was actually just a dash and I'm just misseeing it. <laughs> um... But yeah, so the, with the Megatron cloak now, Annie's going to be a little bit more survivable, and she is back on her build path with the Morella Nomicon finished uh, and the Sorcerer shoes to get some damage in here. Not quite as much damage as possible, but with... Uh, I'm going to force the Flash here, actually, just the threat of an Annie. Uh, going to be too much for Aurelia. Uh, but with the threat of a... Uh, Viger counter to just building raw damage with a DFG first. 
Annie actually probably making the right decision here to go uh, Morel Navicon first now. Blue side just asserting their dominance here and getting that red buff steal. Uh, but they are going to actually take this fight here, and that will be the Annie going down first as Lucian continue, <laughs> continues to be zoned here and is going to be knocked up by the Cho'Gath Cho tanking the turret. No, it's actually Viger tanking the turret, but he will get away. And this looks to be almost another ace here. Sejuani taking quite low. And <laughs> Cho'Gath just going to be the monster he is and walk right back through that turret as they take the mid turret. And this game looks to be almost lost already. With that uh, gold lead now almost 14,000 gold in the lead here. Or almost 13,000 gold in the lead. And now with an inhibitor down. Uh, this seems to be, like, possibly too much to overcome at this point. Uh, no lane has a favorable matchup right now. <laughs> Sejuani, unfortunately, not able to catch the Viger there. Uh, almost did with that charge at the end. Uh, but I think the way back into this might be uh, through some more ward control in their jungle here. Uh, these, this vision is allowing them to cancel some recalls. Uh, to try and possibly force an objective if they can, but they might actually not even be able to really contest any objective right now. Uh, without these minions, they're not really going to be able to take this mid turret. Viger getting pulled over uh, with the Sejuani, but Leon is not the target they really want to go for, being how tanky she is, even if she's chunked out quite this... Uh, quite this amount, it's not going to be enough to really be something they want to follow up on. They really want to get a pull on one of those more tanky targets, and uh, we have Udyr in the top lane taking that turret, doing what Udyr does best, split pushing uh, with those auto attacks and the righteous Udyr fury, uh, but I'm not sure that's actually going to be enough at this point. They do, it is bringing them some uh, very key glo global gold that they do need at this point, so Definitely a tactic they want to employ uh, to try and get the rest of these outer turrets down at least. Um, perhaps group around uh, some objectives uh, to try and keep the team busy while Udyr goes at it. Uh, but with this mid lane still pushed up this far, I'm not sure Redside can even really contest this dragon that's going to be coming up. This looks like the Scuttle Crab will be going over to the blue side, so that will give them the speed shrine. And no, Viger not going to go down too hard. If Viger even blowing up the Lucian with his ultimate. The raw damage off that. Plenty. And that's a double kill for Viger when the Udyr teleports in. The Viger full combo is plenty for Lucian regardless of if he has AP or not at this point. And I mean, that at this point you got to really, whenever there's a Viger, you cannot uh, follow up that engagement here. It does not look like he even used his Deathfire Grasp for that. Um, so, I mean, at this point, we got to, you got to believe that there's some way for Red to start looking to create favorable picks for them using this Blitzcrank. Um, this might be the one saving grace to get them back. If you can get a pull to start an engage and pick someone off with a, uh, some burst from Lucian and Annie, um, and then use uh, Sejuani to try and zone everyone off as you disengage and take that one free kill. I mean, those picks are going to have to be how Red Side gets back into this, otherwise uh, they might not have a chance at this point. Uh, Blue Side might just keep going uh, and press this 13k advantage they have right now. And this is exactly the way to press that advantage by taking this Baron. Uh, Leona tanking it up here. Uh, and it looks like there is just complete control over this. The uh, only wards right now for Red Side uh, are in their jungle. It's, the pressure has been so pushed back that they did not even uh, know that Baron was going down. Um, so they do know now, uh, seeing everybody with that Baron buff, seeing the Viger in the bottom lane and the Cho'Gath on top of the ward right now, um, they will know that the Baron has been taken, so they will know the timer on that for the respawn. But the question at this point, quite frankly, is surviving till the next respawn. As this inner turret goes down, the uh, almost the last inner turret uh, for the red side, and this inhibitor turret 
coming under fire here. It's gonna actually get taken down fairly quickly with four members here. And Cho'Gath with the Nasher's Tooth uh, gonna be <laughs> an actual strong force here in taking down uh, these uh, objectives with those auto attacks. And it looks like they're gonna just rotate bottom here. No, Cho'Gath actually gonna continue to zone away um, with Leona, but it looks like the rest of the damage uh, is gonna go here to this uh, bottom to take that last inner turret. And then they're gonna press up through this bottom lane. A very clean way to close this match out here. Just circle around, no rush, take all the objectives one by one, and pick your engages. Cho'Gath does, does miss the flash Q there, but I'm not even sure it matters at this point. It looks like <laughs> Blitz Crank with some AP will be blown up. Annie soon to fall, and that will be Sejuani going down as well. Corky does overextend a little bit into the fountain and does go down for Lucian. Um, who has captured the, even with the barrier from Lucian, <laughs> only contending with a Viger with no ultimate, that is not going to be enough to DFG too much. We are coming in trying to do anything he can to distract away from the Nexus, and the Flash is coming in, they want this kill before the end of the game. Udyr trying to distract Blitz, trying to pull away, and that's not going to be it. Udyr will go down, and Blitz will as well. Two final kills before the end of this game. A real clinic put on by this LinkedIn team. Uh, oh, just an impressive show of power here. Um, goodness, I, I mean, there's not much to really say about that. So we look, rotate over here to look at the score screen here. Uh, if we can get this pulled up right now. Well, we're having a little technical difficulty showing you the final score screen here at the end. Uh, but the, it seems, I mean, the uh, summation of everything really at this point is they weren't uh, able to create any sort of critical uh, snowball at the early game um, that they needed to, uh, possibly around those early objectives with the um, chain CC they did have available, um, especially if you could get that blitz pull onto somebody and then just chain CC them down with the Udyr, the Annie stun, uh, the Sejuani. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like uh, Red Side was not able to do that. So this will be linked in, uh, taking this game in week one with a strong showing. Gonna finally, here we go. Sorry, I don't know what the second window is here. There we go. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, so they will be putting on a strong showing here in this game. Just outpacing uh, Red Side entirely as far as damage goes. Um, so definitely a strong team to look out uh, for going forward in these coming weeks. Uh, and with that, I'm sure uh, some other teams will be wanting to review this to see just exactly what champions they need to be banning out against this LinkedIn team. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you uh, want to keep up with uh, After Hours Gaming League, go to the official AHGL website. Uh, all the games for League of Legends, uh, the schedule is on that site. And all of the videos, uh, like this one, will be uploaded to that site and linked there uh, for you to keep up with all the matches that are cast uh, for uh, the season as we go through it. So, uh, again, I am Crick Chronic War Catalyst. Thank you for watching.